hi guys welcome back to fairies tutorials in today's episode we'll be looking at seasick food nutrition and health past paper questions for paper two for the topics foodborne illnesses microorganisms that contaminates food and also food spoilage and contamination want to find out more stay tuned and health. CSEC past paper questions and we'll be exploring questions for the topics food spoilage and contamination, microorganisms that contaminate food, and also foodborne illnesses. Now let's kick things off with 2019 exam questions. Define the term food infection. Two marks. Now we have two definitions here, so you can choose the one that you're most comfortable with, all right? So food infection is the contamination of food by foodborne pathogens, such as bacteria, viruses, or parasites. Or you may say food infection is any illness caused by eating foods that contains living disease causing microorganisms right and that response that question is worth two marks still continuing with 2019 the next question suggests two guidelines that should be followed for each of the following factors in order to prevent food contamination during the preparation and service of food right and the categories outlined are temperature personal hygiene and also kitchen or food hygiene so your task is to suggest two guidelines that should be followed in the following categories all right now what i've included here for you are about four uh, uh factors or guidelines each so you can stick to the ones that are 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 better for you or ones that you're more, most comfortable with all right so as it relates to temperature let's look at these guidelines so bacteria and other microorganisms multiply rapidly at certain temperatures therefore food should be kept below or above those temperatures good next guideline for temperature cook food to temperatures above 140 degrees fahrenheit to kill microorganisms good keep cold food below 40 degrees fahrenheit to stop the multiplication of microorganisms and the next one we have there in serving food keep food out of the temperature danger zone and that is the temperature that reigns between 40 degrees fahrenheit to 140 degrees fahrenheit right and that temperature is called the temperature danger zone because it's the ideal temperature for microorganisms to grow to multiply to reproduce you name it all right uh next category personal hygiene wash hands after using washroom and before handling food as bacteria can be transferred to food from hands right so that's an example of cross-contamination not washing your hands so whatever microorganisms or bacteria may be present on your hand will be transferred to the food especially if it's a ready-to-eat food so for instance if you're making sandwiches and there are salads where there are no further cooking it is very dangerous for persons to uh, consume those type of food so that as they will become ill right next cover here while preparing food so no hair will fall into the food as hair contains bacteria yes it does good do not cough sneeze or talk over food as this transfers bacteria and viruses to the food they would continue to multiply if the food is not cooked and guess what sometimes too 
when the food is cooked, the bacteria already pass out toxins and waste products on the food. So even though cooking may kill the microorganisms, sometimes the toxins will remain in there and then persons will consume those foods and can also become ill. Next point, ensure fingernails are cut clean and free from nail polish as well right now let us look at the guidelines for kitchen or food hygiene clean kitchen regularly and sanitize counters two dispose of garbage regularly three use clean kitchen towels and utensils to prevent contamination four do not handle cooked and raw foods together to prevent cross contamination good and cover foods from flies and insects as these can contaminate the food and spread diseases, right? So your task was to suggest two guidelines that should be followed for each of the following factors. The factors were temperature, personal hygiene, and also kitchen or food hygiene that can prevent uh, food contamination during the preparation and storage of the food, right? All right. Now, let us move on to 2017. Name one of the agents responsible for the discoloration seen in cut fruits and vegetables. And that uh, worth one mark. Good. So whenever you cut, it may be right, bananas, it may be apples, right? And you notice that discoloration, that browning. What is responsible? What is taking place? Now, you are supposed to name one agent, so your response may be enzyme or it may also be oxygen. Good? So a reaction of the oxygen, so when the food is cut or the fruit is cut and is exposed to air or to ox oxygen, along with the enzymes that have been activated, then we'll see a browning, an enzymic browning taking place. We may call it also oxidation and that is responsible for the discoloring. Now to get rid of that, I know your teacher may tell you if you're making, for example, fruit salad and you're using red bananas or you're using apples, whatever the case may be, your teacher may tell you to add some form of acidic acid to it, such as maybe lime juice or lemon juice to slow down that process or to prevent it from happening, all right? All right, next question, name two microorganisms that can contaminate food two marks so we have here bacteria mold and yeast all right continuing with 2017 janet prepared a fish for dinner but the fish was tainted and soft suggest four factors other than the presence of microorganisms that may have contributed to the spoilage of the fish four marks now guys, seeing that the presence of microorganisms is taken out of the question, you may be wondering, how am I gonna come up with four other factors that contribute uh, to the spoilage of the fish without uh, clearly stating microorganism, right? But anyhow, let's go with the four that we have here. The first one we have is improper storage, good? So the fish may have been left in the danger zone and the danger zone is between what 40 degrees fahrenheit to 140 degrees fahrenheit therefore bacteria may grow and re and produce toxins which can cause foodborne illnesses or we may say food intoxication and those toxins that are heat resistant are not destroyed by cooking right the next point that we have next factor poor food handling so food utensils such as cutting boards knives spoons bowls and other equipment used may be contaminated uh, during food processing and also during the preparation of food and next factor that we have here is also enzymatic action so once the fish has been harvested, enzymes are activated, which will cause spoilage if the fish is not stored at the correct temperature. 
So that just as how we speak of uh, fruits and vegetables, when they are cut, the enzymes is are activated and therefore the enzyme will action will eat away the cells cell walls and eventually will cause decay or deterioration of the food item likewise when meat has been slaughtered or fish has been harvested the same enzymic action also take place that work to uh, destroy or to spoil these food items so therefore Proper, con proper control of, for example, like temperature management is important. And the next factor that we have here is unhygienic surroundings. So we speak of poor food and also poor kitchen hygiene can have uh, led to the fish being soft and tainted because it is contaminated. Good. All right. Continuing. So just three signs or symptoms that persons who eat the tainted and spoiled fish may show and that is three marks so abdominal pain diarrhea nausea and vomiting some persons may experience chills and sweating a fever and also even a headache so you you are required to um, list three symptoms so any of those three is suitable all right next question workers at a cafeteria prepared and this is from 2016 workers at a cafeteria prepared milk based fish chowders which is a soup at 6 a.m the heat was turned off and the chowder was left on the cooker until it was time to serve at 12 noon as an item for lunch state two symptoms of food poisoning that a person may experience if the chowder is consumed two marks so again we speak of cramping in abdom abdomen also nausea vomiting or diarrhea good Continuing, explain three factors that may contribute to food contamination of the chowder. Six marks. So the first thing that we're thinking of what is improper storage, right? Because the chowder was left in the temperature danger zone for prolonged period, about six hours, right? So therefore, bacteria may grow and produce toxins which can cause foodborne illnesses those toxins that are heat resistant are not destroyed by cooking therefore persons who consume the chowder will will become sick good the next uh factor that may contribute is poor food handling and we may also say unhygienic surroundings so we, again we speak of the utensils such as the cutting boards the knife the soup the bowl and other equipment used uh, during the preparation of the food or processing to uh, may be contaminated as well. Next factor, a high protein content of, because remember it's a milk, fish and milk chowder. So a high protein content and therefore moisture content as well, both for the fish and the milk and what time and temperature abuse right of the soup provided the ideal conditions for the microorganisms to reproduce so you can just imagine how happy those microorganisms are in that soup so remember that uh high risk foods foods that are potentially dangerous food must be kept at a certain temperature and it was left out in the temperature danger zone for a prolonged period therefore bacteria kept on multiplying producing toxins and therefore the entire thing became contaminated good next suggest four factors of hygiene and food safety one should consider when purchasing the milk and fish for the chowder four marks so i know some some may be coming to your mind now but the ones that we're going to look at are buy food items from reputable source or suppliers so persons who are certified persons who have an 
have a knowledge of how time and temperature is important in selling high risk foods all right be conscious of the time and temperature abuse of, and the potentially hazardous food that you're purchasing so when you purchase from the supplier you don't spend a lot of time walking around you head straight home so that um your products these products may not fall in the temperature danger zone during transportation all right next be conscious of date labeling and when we speak of date labeling we're speaking of the sell by date especially on the milk the use by date the expiry date good and the final one that we have there is to purchase pasteurized milk you know pasteurized milk is one that has been gone through the process of heating which kills microorganisms. Now we're moving on to the final year and the one that we have here, we're closing it out with 2011. The question reads, Gavin and Gobin ate baked chicken, fries and coleslaw for lunch. Later, they complained of feeling unwell. It was suspected that their illness was a result of food poisoning caused by baked, the baked chicken. Now your task is to state two signs and symptoms these boys are likely to experience. So guys, if you notice, uh, quite a few of these questions ask for signs and symptoms of food poisoning and also foodborne illnesses. Good. Now, any two of these are adequate. So abdominal pain, diarrhea nausea and vomiting chills and sweating fever or headache good now name the bacteria that may have been present in the baked chicken one mark and the ideal response there is salmonella so just three personal hygiene practices that the person who served the baked chicken may not have followed three marks so one they did not wash their hands after using the washroom and before handling food as bacteria can be transferred to food from hands right so there we're speaking of cross-contamination another suggestion is they may have coughed sneeze or talk over food and this transfers bacteria and viruses to the food and they may have also had cuts and bruises that were not covered as well and the this action also can cause cross contamination to the food as well you are awesome. You've made it to the end of the session. Please remember to subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells so you can be notified when there's another upload. Watch those ads, leave a like and a comment, and most importantly, share with persons who you know will find this information useful. Thank you for making it Ferris Tutorials.